Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we are looking at an advanced tutorial on the new product timelines from MotionVFX. Now, before we get into this tutorial, definitely be sure to check out our other tutorials on timelines that can give you a better understanding of how they work and how to apply your footage. Now with that in mind, you can see that we already have one of our timelines populated with our own footage. And I wanted to go over a few quick ways that you can modify these so that they will fit perfectly for your edit. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that any of your titles or adjustment layers absolutely move independently. So you can retime those if you want your title, for instance, to go a little bit longer than the preset. Well, that's definitely okay not a problem whatsoever you of course can do this with your frames your color look adjustment layers etc by turning those on and off or adjusting the size and duration now you'll also notice in our timeline that we have a variety of markers. We have our purple markers and red. Red are indications that a cut has been made. However, purple are indications that a cut can be made and it is still going to work well within your timeline. So there's a few ways that we can do this. If you want to modify a cut where it is placed, simply click T and then that brings up your trim tool and you can just make your adjustments really quickly based on those markers and your cut is still going to fall in line really well. You can also tap B for your blade and you can make a cut on any of these markers and we know that your timeline is still going to work out well and then simply replace the clip with the part that you would like to use on that new cut just like you would if it were a gap clip. Now you'll notice that we do have some duplicate footage here indicated by Final Cut Pro. If you tap T and you want to make a change to this footage, you can do so by just clicking inside and dragging this footage back so that you see that you no longer have duplicate segments there. Now remember, if you are working in one of these clips that you are trimming has a title or something above, let's say that we want to modify the timing in which this footage begins or ends, and you have an attached title layer or something, if you click T, you notice that it is going to move that title. But if you have T and you hold tilde down, you can then move that clip and it is called a slip edit. So that is not going to adjust anything above. All right, so now for the fun part, we have brought some secondary music in that we want to change out. So I'm going to tap V on this layer and tap V on my new music that I have brought in. Now I know that this music is not matching up perfectly just yet, and that is absolutely okay. We are going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to zoom into my timeline a bit, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. Let's see where our music is coming in and where we want our waveforms to start hitting on our markers. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick stop here. I know I want my red marker to line up a bit better with this music. So I'm going to tap M and I've now created a marker here where this cut should be. I'm going to tap T and I'm going to just line those up. Now, sometimes you might not be able to do this. That is okay. You can also just trim your song back a bit and then match your markers up. And then you can trim the beginning back to the front. And now let's see if our markers are lining up and our cuts are lining up with our music. Much better, everything matches, it is lined up and we are good to go for the duration of our video. Now, let's say that I really love this music, but I wanted to make something happen with a longer song. I'm going to go ahead and take my selection here and let's find out where we want this song to begin. Okay, so we want our song to begin in this section. So I'm going to tap I 
and I'm just going to bring this music in beneath. Let's go ahead and disable our bottom music and let's check this out. We're going to use the same method by finding the spot that we want our markers to line up. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now I can already actually see from the waveforms where our markers should line up, but let's go ahead and play it so we can hear it. Okay, so I know that my marker needs to happen right around here because we can see some jumps in our waveforms. We can also see them here. This might even be a better indicator. So I'm just going to line up at the beginning of my waveform there, tap M. Let's go ahead and we can trim the front back a little. Let's match our marker, there we go. And then we can trim the front again, maybe put a little bit of a fade in and let's see how that's sounding and looking. Perfect. Those look really good. So as we zoom back out, we can see that we have a good amount of music left that we are wanting to use. So we need to make this timeline a bit longer in duration. Now, the same method that I use here is exactly the same if you want to shorten it. So we know that we need to make it quite a bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and come to this section here on this cut. So I'm just going to tap R to select a range and I'm just going to go from my markers here, red marker to red marker about that amount. I'm going to click Command C and then let's come back down and let's start with our last red marker so we know that we're replacing this red marker here to this last one, Command V. And now we know that our cuts are still going to kind of match up. Everything's going to line up just fine there to the end of the timeline. Then we're going to look at the sections that maybe we like a lot. So I really love this section here where there's several cuts and a couple transitions. And it is the same amount. I'm going to tap R. Let's select our range from red to red. Let's do Command C. And then I'm actually going to just click Command V and we are going to move that timeline out that much more so that it matches up. Then we are just going to move our timeline back there so that we can make sure that those cuts are happening. And to be honest, I see that we still have a little bit more that we need to hit. So I'm going to match up with my last red marker there. Command V one more time. Let's bring our cuts section there. I will zoom in a bit, make sure that that's all accurate. Zoom back out. Okay, and we see that we need to have this ending in this section. So why don't we just cut out a couple of our clips. And there we go. Now it looks like our cut should boom right out with our music. So let's check these cuts out and see how they're doing. So I can see that this cut is not lining up with my red cut, that's okay. Let's go ahead and just trim back. And now these cuts should be happening right on time. There we go, perfect. Now that we've done that, I want to just go ahead and drag my adjustment layer, my color layer and my frame back down so that everything matches up. And now you have a timeline set up and you can replace any of your duplicate clips the way that we have showed you previously. If you have any questions about timelines, be sure to drop us a line at motionvfx.com. Timelines are now available. Thank you for checking this tutorial out and we'll see you on the next one.